Hi! In this video we're going to see how can we use some really powerful features of Mystica Boutique in Mystica Workflows. We will focus on the display filters functionality. And for this tutorial, we have created three examples with several levels of complexity. None of them are really complicated, but the three of them can be useful in many pipelines. The first one is the most simple one. It's just a basic color transformation. So we are using an array file, and over this file we are applying a unicolor effect to transform from Loxy and White Gamut to 709 and Gamma 2.4. For example, for creating some proxies. We know that Array provides their own loot 3D to make this kind of conversions, but our color management offers much more options. For example, as an alternative, we can create a color conversion for DCP, transforming from P3 to XYZ. In both cases, all we have to do is double clicking over the top effect, go to Display Filter, and create Display Filter. Here we can write the name of the display filter and save it. Now the display filter will appear in my list, and more important in this case, in my display filter folder. Then we can just copy this display filter and paste it in my shared folder, so this file can be used by any other Mystica software. As you can see, all the display filters that we are going to explain in this video are already copied, so I don't really need to do it. Now if we go to Mystica Workflows, I can build a workflow where I can apply this new display filter. In this case, my idea is to apply this conversion over Array raw files. So I'm going to select Array as the input of the workflow, and then I'm going to add my media to that node. Now is the moment to apply the color conversion in my render. I'm going to select ProRes Proxy for this conversion. And if we go to the end of my parameter list, I have the display filter option. So I choose Array 709, I drag my output folder, and now we can just add this workflow to my queue and start the render. Another option of course is to replace my input node for a watcher. Load the folder that I want to use for my watcher node, and then every time that we add a new sequence or new media in this folder, Mystia Workflows will start the process. Ok, now let's take a look to our second example. In this case, we have a stack that composed a watermark over my clips with the EGO logo. The technique is exactly the same. First we create the display filter, and then we copy that display filter to my shared folder. We finally build the workflow in Mystia Workflows. In this case, I'm going to start directly with a watcher folder, and then I'm going to connect an H265 render node. In this node, I'm going to apply the display filter. Let's add something else to this workflow. We can add an FTP node to upload the render result for our client, for example. Or we can just do what we did in the introduction to Mystic Workflows video and add a copy node with the output to our OneDrive folder. Ok, let's take a look to the most complex example in this video. In this case we are working with some EXR multilayer files, very heavy media in fact, and some of the softwares of our pipeline don't support really well these kind of files. But we need them because they have some depth map information that can be really useful. So the main goal of this workflow is to generate two different files every time we make a render. The first one will be a compressed EXR file with the RGB information, and the second one will be my death map in TIFF, for example. The selection of the TIFF is just to make a difference, but we can use EXR as well. So let's take a look to our stack in Mystica Boutique. When we load the EXR file, we realize that Mystica doesn't recognize really well the RGB layer, because of the name that the render engine is using for that layer when we generate those files. So first we apply a layer root to extract the RGB layer. Then we see that the image is in linear light, and we want to have the media in Gamma 2.4 for example. So again, we use a unicolor effect for that transformation. With this stack, we create our first display filter for this workflow. Then I need to extract the depth map to generate a different file, but the depth map is not normalized. We need to use the spatial key effect to extract that information. 
This will place the death map in the alpha channel of my clip. But again, for some reason, we want it as an independent file. So we put a show alpha to replace the original RGB layer with the death map layer. And then we save this as a second display filter. Ok, now is the moment to go back to Mystica workflows. In here we're going to use again a water node as an input, which in this case is connected to two different render nodes. One is our compressed EXR file for the RGB layer. In this node I'm going to select EXRDWA and we're going to apply the display filter that we created before. And the second one is our TIFF node, with the display filter for the death map. We need to add in both cases my output folder for each of the render nodes. And then we are ready to go. Now we can add this workflow to my queue and every time that I put something in the watch folder, it will start the workflow. As you can see, with Mystica Boutique and Mystica Workflows the possibilities are huge, allowing to build your own workflows for any kind of situation. This has been another good example of the full integration between Mystica softwares.